Today on Truths That Transform. There is no doubt that in many ways the moral situation in America continues to decline. We see George Soros funneling money into a lot of campaigns for smaller offices, not just presidential campaigns. And the question that is asked is why? Well, evidently he wants to influence the policies in America. Welcome to Truths to Transform, a production of D. James Kennedy Ministries, where we are standing for truth and defending your freedom. I'm Rob Pacienza, Senior Pastor of Coral Ridge Presbyterian Church, founded by Dr. D. James Kennedy. We're continuing our month-long look at the epidemic of lawlessness in America and its solutions, from crime on the streets to cheating at the ballot box, the breakdown of order in America affects all of us in our daily lives. The foundations of our system of law have been eroding as we've increasingly moved God out of our public life. And there are powerful people who have actively pursued this course, making America less stable, safe, and prosperous. We begin with an investigation of how a new wave of prosecutors in some of America's largest cities are excusing crime and coddling evildoers. Our own David Wright has more. Across America, crime rates are skyrocketing. Murders have spiked nearly 40% since 2019. And violent crimes, including shootings and other assaults, have also increased. All the while, prosecutors are picking and choosing which laws to enforce and releasing dangerous criminals back onto the streets. Well, I think the history shows that uh, after 50 years of voting for Democrats, 50 plus years, that we see that crime is still out of control. Criminal justice is yet another area where progressives have really uh, uh, taken the train off the track. Their attitude seems to be uh, far more friendly to criminals than it uh, is to the victims of criminals. And a big consequence of that is we get more of both, more criminals and more victims. Uh, that should not be the point of criminal justice. It ought to be to produce fewer criminals and fewer victims. You see more and more crime not being pursued or, or, and investigated, people being arrested because of DAs and because of the, you know, uh, uh, the, the pressure being put on police uh, with prosecutions and things like that. So, I mean, there are consequences to all this, and the consequence is people are left safe. And, uh, and, and people who are guilty are, are taking control of our streets. This massive spike in crime is happening amidst a nationwide push for criminal justice reform, led by the radical left, which seeks to end tough policing and mass incarceration. And this battle is being fought at the local level. If you want you know, nationwide bail reform, well, the odds of that passing the House and Senate is quite low, you know, regardless of who's in charge, it's an insane policy. Um, but if you can control a district attorney, well, they have discretion over what kind of crimes get prosecuted and for how long, and, um, and just all, you know, any, uh, if bail is going to be set or not, um, and just what kind of offenses they really consider offenses. And uh, we've seen the consequences nationwide. A major funder of these radical prosecutors is the billionaire George Soros. Uh, George Soros is, you know, the most influential living um, man involved in politics today, uh, especially in, in the United States. We see George Soros funneling money into a lot of campaigns for smaller offices, not just presidential campaigns. And the question that is asked is why? Well, evidently he wants to influence the policies in America. Um, now he's backing uh, district attorneys and, and going way, you know, way overboard in the local arena. When you have a, a local district attorney election where maybe someone spends a hundred or two hundred thousand dollars on their campaign, and Soros writes a check for a million dollars to the competitor, uh, it does make it very hard to compete. 
In 2020, the McCloskey family out of St. Louis, Missouri, was unfortunate enough to experience firsthand a rogue Soros-funded prosecutor. The St. Louis couple called Mark and Patricia McCloskey became folk heroes to many across the country after they were confronted by a mob, a dangerous mob, outside their home and returned with firearms to protect it and themselves. Mark and Patricia McCluskey were in St. Louis in a nice neighborhood in the West area, and their neighborhood had a gate around it, uh, but it was invaded by uh, Black Lives Matter and different protesters, and they held guns in front of their house and to protect themselves and their property. Uh, this was at a time when other properties in downtown St. Louis were being destroyed by these rioters. And the uh, prosecutor in St. Louis, Kim Gardner, uh, wanted to hold the McCluskeys responsible and uh, wanted to uh, criminally prosecute them for holding a gun in front of their house. Instead of going after these people that busted a gate and came in on into their neighborhood and brought fear into that neighborhood, uh, instead of going after them, Kim Gartner wanted to prosecute this couple. But Kim Gartner, when we zoom in on her, uh, she received funding for her campaign from George Soros. Another Soros-funded prosecutor is Kim Fox out of Cook County, Chicago. Her office dropped the charges on the now convicted race hoaxer, Jesse Smollett, after he staged a hate crime in order to garner more media attention. Soros has funded other notable rogue prosecutors, such as George Gascon in Los Angeles, Larry Krasner in Philadelphia, as well as Alvin Bragg in New York City. The New York State actually uh, passed bail reform, and this was not Soros backed, but you see an identical play out of where Soros backed attorneys have done this. Um, where 90% of, of crimes are deemed nonviolent and deemed, okay, we won't have bail for these. Well, the problem with that is who determines what crimes are nonviolent? Um, and you have a group of bureaucrats who almost uh, have a, a far left agenda and their sympathies are going to be different than yours. Furthermore, in several major cities, these prosecutors have stopped prosecuting crimes like theft. San Francisco's leftist DA is no longer prosecuting shoplifters who steal less than $950 worth of merchandise, and yet appears shocked that there has been a subsequent spike in shoplifting, causing many businesses to abandon the area. I would say with the, with the Soros-backed DAs, you know things are bad when district attorneys are household names. Um, I think if you pull the average person on the street, like who is your representative, uh, a depressing amount won't know. But you have people like Chase Abudin in, in San Francisco who's effectively legalized shoplifting where it's, hey, you know, if it's under a certain amount, uh, we, it's just going to be a misdemeanor. And that actually is the case in, in most states, but in California, they don't prosecute those kind of misdemeanors. So it's effectively legalized theft there. According to a recent Rasmussen poll, most voters support removing soft on crime prosecutors, yet crime rates in major cities still rise. And what's remarkable, and you have some of these same people, including many of these recently elected district attorneys, who will at the same time support movements like defund police, but will have private security. You know, no police for thee, but many police for me. You know, um, it, it is the, the hypocrisy because one of the touchstone figures, and I'm not saying that every one of these district attorneys are knowing and intelligible participants in this uh, ideological commitment, but it's no doubt about it that they may be, as Lenin described them, useful idiots in establishing this kind of Marxist phenomenon where the fomentation of chaos is a necessary component to get people to willingly jettison their commitment to truth, one, and their commitments to various freedoms. You know, and so you, when you have people who will say, uh, in, who are, who've been elected to serve in a position of law and order, uh, but actually who are no longer, at, who are not really adherents personally to the law and are not interested in order, it's showing that our system is being turned upside down, but it's being done intentionally. The design of the Marxists is to create chaos. And by having infiltrated our system of government at that level, at the level of the prosecutor and the attorneys that, that represent the rule of law, and if they are releasing criminals into the community, that's not by accident, that's by design. They are creating uncertainty, they're creating fear, and they're creating doubt of the system. 
that's what they want in order to produce what they need. It is all part of the Marxist design to create chaos. For them, out of chaos comes a new order. Our free booklet, Issues and Answers from God's Word, gives useful verses and biblical perspective on crucial matters. What does God have to say about money, schools, government, sexuality, borders, and the very nature of life itself? We'll send you this valuable resource at no cost or obligation to you. Just call or write asking for Issues and Answers from God's Word to help discern the truth about topics that affect you. Our educational system in America has been teaching a false, secular view of humanity for several generations now. This view says that there is no God. Or if there is, he has nothing to do with anything important. It says that we arrived here by cosmic accident. It should be no surprise then that as a culture, we now think there is no law outside of us and that the highest good is self-expression, particularly in the realm of sex and gender. My pastor and teacher, Dr. D. James Kennedy, explains how this came to be and what we can do about it. In his message, the spiritual pulse of America. How is America doing spiritually and morally? Well, there is no doubt that in many ways, the moral situation in America continues to decline. And uh, there are all kinds of moral and spiritual problems in this country. Keeping in mind that the problems in America are all reducible to one, and that is sin, rebellion against God. We have succeeded in removing uh, the Bible and prayer from our schools and uh, the results of this have been far more overwhelming than most people have imagined. You know, there is a cost to unbelief. Secularism comes with a high price tag. Our morals, without scripture and without prayer, have continued to plummet. As William J. Bennett has put it, former Secretary of Education, quote, over the last three decades, we have experienced substantial social regression. Today, the forces of social decomposition are challenging and in some instances, I might say many, are overtaking the forces of social composition. Don Fetter, who is a witty columnist, uh, not a Christian, he is Jewish by faith. In his book, A Jewish Conservative Looks at Pagan America, he sums up what's going on in our schools in this way. He says it reached a point where public school students can experience anything, things that the average sailor on shore leave would never imagine of encountering except God. Sex, education, suicide studies, lifeboat ethics, condom distribution, abortion pleading, all of which are part of the humanist creed, constitute the propagation of all aspects of public school experience in the 1990s. It is only prayers, Bible, and references to the supreme being which have been ruled out. Our nation has been engaged for over 30 years in a great experiment, and that is whether or not any people can live with God pushed into a corner of their lives never to be seen. The ACLU, that's the anti-Christian litigation union. It's really ironic that they have convinced many people 
that they are as American as, the, as apple pie. They are the American Civil Liberties Union, founded by Was it Abraham Lincoln or George Washington? <laughs> Founded by Roger Baldwin, who said in a public speech, quote, communism is the goal. And on whose board of directors, there were two chairmen, subsequent chairman, chairman of the Communist Party of America. American? Civil liberties, hogwash. And of course, they have been busy as usual. They love the holiday season. Their favorite Christmas carol, I guess you know what that is. You don't know what that is. Away with the manger. <laughs> Someone said they greatly resemble the the Grinch who stole Christmas. Well, he didn't succeed and neither will they, though they have done their very best to remove every single vestige of Christianity from the public square. In, fight, in spite of the fact that George Washington said it would be impossible to govern without God and the Bible, John Adams said it would be impossible to govern without God and the Ten Commandments, but we've gotten rid of the Bible and the Ten Commandments, and we wonder why it's impossible to govern. Or as one of our founding fathers said, we have no constitution in power capable of dealing with an irreligious or an immoral people. We have no constitution capable of dealing with the kind of people that the ACLU is trying to create. One of the economic problems of our time, and I remember somebody said one time they can't even imagine a church making reference to the federal debt. Why, that's not a moral issue, that's an economic issue, right? Wrong. What would you think of a couple of parents who went out and lived so lavishly, they continued to borrow more and more and more money to do anything and go everywhere and buy everything they wanted, and then they died. And they left hundreds of thousands of dollars of debt for their children and their grandchildren to pay off. Now that's very obviously a moral issue. And so is it when we leave hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of billions of dollars of interest payments to our children and grandchildren to pay off. The great problem in America, uh, Mr. Bennett described it as social composition and social decomposition. The Bible describes it in similar concepts, but different words. You know, the Bible is all about three things. Not only is the Bible about these things, but the entire history of mankind can be described in three simple words. And they are generation, degeneration, and regeneration. That's the whole story of the Bible. Generation, degeneration, and regeneration. God generated the heavens and the earth, man degenerated as he fell into sin, and God through Christ and by his spirit is regenerating the human race. As we read today, Christ said you must be born again. The theological term for that is regeneration, recreation. The problems in America all boil down to one simple word and that is sin. That's the only problem America has, sin. And the only answer to that problem is Christ. And by his gospel and through his spirit, lives can be utterly transformed. I think of Star Parker. 
Well, if there ever was a welfare queen, Star Parker was she. In fact, she described herself in that way. She was involved in all of the hazards of drug, debauchery, promiscuity, crime, illegitimacy, and abortion. Her whole life was just a litany of those kinds of woes. And then she was dramatically converted to Jesus Christ. She got off welfare, went back to school, earned a degree, started a business, became successful, got into ministry, married a pastor, is engaged in helping people everywhere. She was born again. And except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Ah, dear one, get involved in the most exciting thing that's happening in the whole world, generation, degeneration, and regeneration, and we can become a part of that. I am excited about what's going to happen. And you know something? You don't see any of this in the newspaper. It's a secret. They don't know what's happening. Don't tell anyone. It's our own little conspiracy. We are going to turn the world upside down. That's what they said about the apostles in Acts. Those that have turned the world upside down have come hither also. May they say that about us. Amen. Only we are going to turn it right side up. I'm Jennifer Kennedy Cassidy. My father, Dr. D. James Kennedy, saw clearly where secularism would take us. And over the past handful of years, you and I have seen America's descent into lawlessness accelerate like never before. As he said, it takes those who believe in absolutes, those who are born again, to turn the tide of moral anarchy in this nation. But as you've seen on this program, there are forces working to undermine those absolutes. They tear at the fabric of law and order and destabilize our nation. The secretive atheist billionaire George Soros is at the very front of that line. Soros has pumped untold millions of dollars into leftist causes, including funding the campaigns of district attorneys who are looking the other way on crime, and sometimes turning violent offenders back out onto the streets. Find out about this secretive influencer and how he's shaping America in the book, George Soros Exposed, Spending Billions to Radically Transform America by our own John Amon. We'll send it to you as our thanks for your generous donation to the vital work of this ministry. This book shines light on this shadowy figure who exerts such an outsized influence on our political life. And if you're able to give a donation of $60 or more, we'll send you the book plus our award-winning DVD documentary, Billionaire Radical, George Soros and the Scheme to Remake America. Movie Guide called this program an engrossing must-see documentary, and it pulls back the veil on Soros and his activities. It shows how he has worked to undermine America by encouraging unrest, promoting abortion, and opening our borders. We'll also include our exclusive resource, the Follow the Money Chart. This chart illustrates how George Soros' money flows into radical causes, so you can see with your own eyes his influence in America's institutions and organizations. That's the book, George Soros Exposed, Spending Billions to Radically Transform America, as our thanks for your generous donation. And the book, plus the DVD documentary, Billionaire Radical, as well as the one-of-a-kind Follow the Money chart, as our thanks for your donation of $60 or more. And with your gift, you are helping us to produce powerful Bible-based programs and resources on hot issues that are simply not available anywhere else. So please, consider giving a generous donation. Simply write to us at D. James Kennedy Ministries, Box 11154, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33339 
or call toll free 877-962-7677 or go online to djkm.org. We live in a self-indulgent culture where people try to find meaning for their existence and purpose for their life, not in the absolute, but in the subjective realities of this world. Their understanding is that we live according to one guiding principle, my life is for me, with no larger purpose than that. That is why we live in a culture obsessed with indulging itself in every guilty pleasure in order to find meaning, purpose, and the reality for our existence. Decades of teaching children that they are the accidental product of matter, time, and chance has a tangible effect on society. And it becomes even more noteworthy when we realize that there are ideological followers of Karl Marx who have encouraged and enabled it as a way of bringing about a kind of revolution. So what can you do? The first thing is both obvious and often untried. Pray. America needs a reawakening to God and his word and his commands. Our people need a revolution in their understanding of who we are. Human beings are infinitely valuable because they're not accidents, but creations of God made in His image. If the meaning of life is not defined by objective absolute truth, but only found in the subjective, then there is no value for life, either inside the womb or outside the womb. And because we are fallen and sinful, we must have laws, as well as police to punish evil and keep order as the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 13. And the second thing you can do is share Christ with your friends, your neighbors, and your community. Only Jesus Christ can change hearts, and only changed hearts will change our nation. After praying, be the means God uses to open someone's eyes to the truth. Invite them to church, share a book, or a program like this one with them. See to it that the people around you have access to the good news of Jesus Christ's death and resurrection for sinners. And finally, vote. Voting for the Christian is both a privilege and an obligation to render unto Caesar what is Caesar's. Vote for candidates who have a true understanding of the issues we've been talking about today from a biblical perspective. Vote for candidates who love America and believe in her founding Christian principles rather than those who see America first and foremost as something to be torn apart and rebuilt on Marxist lines. Elections do have consequences as we are seeing around us every day. D. James Kennedy Ministries is standing for truth and defending your freedom. I'm Pastor Rob Pacienza. Thank you for being with us. And here's a look at the next Truths That Transform. You're talking about defunding the police. Like everyone knows that's crazy talk. It is because people have turned away from God. That's next week. This has been a production of D. James Kennedy Ministries.